Alright guys, this is the easiest way for me to come up with showing you how to make things in Photoshop. Um, we're going to use Photoshop Elements, which is this icon down here. Um, it's on all the computers up at church, except the computer that's right next to the printer. There's no Photoshop on that one. Um, and it's gonna take a minute to boot up. Sorry, I'm sitting in an RV. Um, we're gonna close this box when it comes open. We're gonna go up to File, New, Blank File. And we're gonna change it to a width of 2.25. And a height of 3.25 and a resolution just of 300 dots per inch or pixels per inch per inch and then save it um, as the kid's name and then it'll open like this a couple of things before we get started uh, that you need to your toolbars are over on the left. These are all the different tools that you're going to be using. You'll mainly be using the arrow tool, the magic wand tool, um, maybe the crop tool. The title tool is the T. Um, then the paint bucket fills a whole area with a certain color or a brush tool. Um, a lot of these actually have a little triangle down in the bottom right corner. If you click and hold that certain tool, it gives you different options. Like this is a brush tool, a pencil tool. Um, pencil tool just makes more of a sharp edge um, so the kids can play with those. You also, like when I select the pencil tool up here at the top, you have different controls for that certain tool. So I have an opacity for this one. Um, how dark or how if it's going to be clear, if it's going to be solid. Um, I've got a size of the brush tool. So if I go over, you can't even see that probably. If I go make it the size bigger, I've got more of a circle, a larger circle. If I make it even bigger, I've got a really big circle. Um, then I've got different brush types. So I've got a solid edge. These are feathered edges. Um, so it's not so solid. It's got a softer edge. Um, and then you can also change that manually. You can do different things here with the modes and stuff like that. So the kids can play with that. Some and then you can also switch to the paintbrush or the pencil tool, something like that. Um, also, on the right hand side, way over here, you have layers. Um, when you import a photo with layers or you do like drawing and stuff, I want them to actually get in the habit of making a new layer for everything that they do. So, up at the top, it says layer. They'll go new, layer, and they can name it whatever they want to, like pencil or whatever. I'm not going to do that. But over here now, layer one, one is hidden, layer two is on. Well, they're not hidden, but I'm going to draw on layer two. So I'm just going to draw something real quick. It shows up on layer two, but not layer one. I can hide that and bring it back. I can also make another layer, layer 3, and we'll change the color to a red, and I can draw on top of that black, and then over here, I can either hide one of the layers, or I can, re I can put one layer on top of the other one. So that the kids, if they start typing, and like with the, I'll go over and click on the, the T for my 
typewriter tool and I'll click in the middle of this red spot and I'll start typing something but it's red because I didn't change my color so I'll delete that I'll go up here to my colors select blue or I can go down here in the bottom and select different color and I'll start typing the layer that I typed is on top right now now it's underneath the red so if they can't see what they're typing a lot of times it's because their typing layer is off to select that typing layer if I want to type more on that layer you go and grab the T tool and you click somewhere in that lettering I can also change the lettering to be a larger size or a smaller size up at the top with my controls um, I can use the arrow tool the arrow tool will move the title around so the arrow tool at the top is a moving around um, the pencil or brush is painting I can fill a color like if I want to use the paint bucket I can go to my bottom layer and fill that blue if I want to and then that layer is blue um, you can also insert photos for the background I think that's probably what they'll want to do um, to bring in their photos the best thing to do is open the photos and I haven't even looked at photos so I don't even know what I have um, but I'll find a photo here of uh, maybe Abby I got something of Abby here's one of Abby so if you open a photo and then they can crop it the crop tool is right here and the controls I can control my width and my height so what I would do is I would have them start out with a width of maybe three quarters of an inch so dot seven five by um, one inch so seven point seven five to one inch at a resolution of three hundred and click enter and then I go down here and I can crop that size box so I can select it and then I can say oh I want it a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller and I can move the box around just by clicking inside it and then when I'm done I have to click this error this check mark up here if I click the check mark it crops it if I click stop then it cancels it um, a lot of people will forget that they're doing that on a lot of different um, a lot of different tools have that render tool and people forget that they've got to render it first then I'll use my arrow key my arrow tool to grab the photo and drag it over to my name badge photo now it's showing up behind all the stuff I gotta move it up to the top and then I can move it like up there I can click on my text and move it down here um, I think I can make it bigger I can ah one thing when you're using the arrow tool to make things bigger it's not locked aspect ratio wise so I'm gonna say no I screwed it up so I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna click do not use and it'll put it back to normal if I hold down the shift key and I expand it it keeps it at the same aspect ratio no matter where I move my mouse so tell them to use the shift key unless they want to distort it um, they can do that however they want to. I would put like um, 
MUMY Media Club, three different lines up here by their photo, or down here and put their name up here. And I'd put 2013 as a date on it also. Um, and the other thing is with photos, sorry I'm rambling, with photos when you expand them, you've got to render them again. So I can't do anything on anything else unless I go up here and click the check mark then I can go and grab a new tool if I wanted to. Um, if I go back to Abby's original photo, uh, Command plus zooms in and Command minus zooms out. Um, and the little I've got a, a lasso tool and the magnet and the magic wand. If I click on my magic wand, magic wand will get rid of it'll automatically select a certain color that then I can delete if you want to. I don't want to do that though, so to undo it is Apple Z or Command Z. And it will remember I think 25 different things and we'll get into the histogram in a little bit. Um, if I have something selected, so the little marching ants are down here and I don't want it selected, I can go up to the top and hit select and deselect and it gets rid of my marching ants. Let's say they want to cut their head out. The magic lasso tool right here if I hold it down, I have a lasso tool that's not magnetic. So wherever I move the mouse is wherever it goes. I've got a magnetic lasso tool. And then I've got a polygonal mass lasso tool that does straight lines, basically. I want the magnetic lasso tool. And what it does is it automatically um, picks out the, the line that you're trying to follow. So we're going to try and go, we're going to try and cut the background off of Abby's picture. So I'm going to start off of her shoulder. And every time I click the mouse, it's going to put a junction point in. And it's automatically going to kind of follow her hair up here. This is doing a really bad job, but I don't have a mouse. Um, so I'm just kind of following the magnetic tool actually follows pretty well her hairline until I get over here where everything is kind of looking the same color and it's not going to like that very much. And then I'm going to click way out here. Whoa! That's alright. Because you have to make with the lasso tool, you have to lasso it, which means you have to draw a circle all the way around. I've got my marching ants, and I can hit delete. Then, like for up here in the corners and stuff, I can use my eraser tool, which is the little brick shaped thing over here in the toolbar. And I can select, so right now it's a huge, it's selected to erase a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, I got a decent, I got a deselect my marching ants. So right now I've got marching ants walking around the thing that I just selected. I'm going to deselect that. And then this is how big the tool actually is. And I don't want it to be that big. So I'm going to go up here in the corner and I'm going to make it really small. I'll probably make it like 30 actually. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to get rid of this edge all the way around here and it's got a feathered edge right now you can make it a solid edge if you want to see how her hair kind of disappeared also um, some people like that some people don't I'm just going to give her a couple of pins if you make this a much smaller circle and then zoom in with your command plus you can actually go in and get rid of like these little tip things where my magic lasso wasn't. You can also like 
change your eyeballs or erase your teeth or whatever you want to do. I'm going to erase, undo those two things because I like this picture. Um, you can also, um, the magnet, the clone tool is the magnet or rubber stamp tool. That's a fun one to use. If you hold down option, which is down by the space bar, like on her eyeball, hold down option, it'll give you a target. You click one time, and then you go to wherever you want to put an eyeball, like on her chin, let's say. And I'm going to click and hold down, and it's going to clone her eyeball from up here down to here. So when it clones, there's going to be a little dot up by her eye, or a little X by her, or plus symbol up by her eyeball. And that's just showing me what it's cloning. I can do that. I can make this tool a lot smaller. Even smaller than that. And then I can look at her eyeball and really just kind of get her eyeball in there. Like that. Now I'm doing that on the layer, on the first layer, so it's actually editing that photo specifically. I can also add a new layer. That's not what I wanted. On a new layer. And then I can use, I can go to the background, select what I want to copy. So option, click one time on that layer, go to the new layer, and put it, like, let's put it on our forehead. So then I can put it on her forehead on a separate layer. And if I do it on a separate layer, then I can go over and turn the layer on and off. And I can make the layer more or less opaque. So I can make it I can make it kind of just disappear, be like a ghost image, or I can make it full on 100%. Uh, what else? Oh, to move around, if you're zoomed in like this, by hitting Command Plus, if you, hold, if you have a tool, if you if you're in a certain tool, if you hold down the space bar, it gives you a hand. Click one time, and you can move it around. So that space bar gives you the hand. Click one time and drag the image. It drags the entire image around for you. And then I can zoom out by hitting Command minus. I know I'm going way too fast on this. Um, I'm going to minimize that and go back to this guy. Um, they can also bring in different backgrounds. So let's say I want to open a um, I don't even know what I have on here. Last open. I have the background that I put on my desktop. I think is what this is. Yeah. So this right now is a separate picture. I'm going to use my arrow tool, and I'm going to bring it into my picture and back. And now it's huge. All right. I'm also going to move that. down to the background and then I'm gonna have what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to zoom way out this is if you bring it in without cropping it see this box that's the image size 
So to resize it, I hold down shift so I don't change my aspect ratio. And I make my box smaller. And I move my box over it. And then I zoom back in with command plus. I zoomed out with command minus. And I want to make it bigger so that I cover my entire area. By holding down shift and pulling one of the corners. And then I can turn those two off. Oh, but before I turn these two layers off, I have to say yes, I want to crop that picture that way by hitting the little check mark up here. Then I can go over and change the other layers and turn those off. Then my type my text. I don't like the color of it. So I gotta go to the text tool. I click on my text. I select all and then I change my color. Let's make it more of a whitish color. Okay. Now my text shows up. I can grab my arrow tool up at the top corner, top left corner, and I can move my text around to be seen. I can also put a box around my text, like if my text is down here you really can't see it. But up there I could put a box around it and make the box black. Um, to make a box you have a rectangular tool or a circular tool and do a rectangular tool and go like that. Then we're going to take our um, make our color like let's do a dark blue. Because the water's kind of blue. And then we're going to get our fill, our bucket. And we're going to fill that in. Oh. That's no good. I need another layer. So we're going to go new layer. Layer 6. And we're going to fill in our little square because we've got our marching ants. If we didn't have our marching ants, and if we did not have our marching ants by selecting getting rid of our selected area, and we went and we made a new layer. Okay, a new layer is up there. If we took our bucket. And we clicked on it, it would turn the whole thing blue. I don't want to do that. I want to make an area that I want to select like that. Then get my bucket tool and fill the area in. Um, I can make that layer over here by the layers where it says opacity. I'm going to pull that down. And it will make it more or less dark. Now, that's a separate layer from the text. So I can turn that layer on and off. I can turn the text on and off. I can turn her picture on and off. I can turn my red mark or my black mark off. I can turn my background on and off. Um, I can reorder my stuff. To where my photo is on top of my red and black lines and then you don't see my red and black lines unless I mess with the opacity then if I make the photo disappear a little bit then the red and black come through just a little bit through the photo so that's somewhat of a cool effect if you have a photo that's mostly dark and you and you change the opacity you can actually make it show up more or less um, with the background I just I just turned my blue background on and my photo is at 70 percent opacity now it's like 40 percent opacity 30 percent 
up to like 80% or 100%. So that's a fairly cool way to put a little effect on something. Uh, that's 100% again. Now I need to deselect my marching ants box and that'll get rid of that and I can turn my title back on. Um, give, watch this and give me a call if you guys have any questions. Um, this will give the kids something to do and then we can play with them and have fun. The main thing is do layers over here. Don't change the original photo. So like the way that I was messing with Abby's face and stuff, don't do that um, to the original photo or if you do save as um, so that we still have those original files and we can actually take new headshots if we want to and get better headshots also. Um, to take photos, take photos on the uh, pool table and with lights and then also the kids can run around some and take pictures around church if you have enough adults and have them switch between the computers and the cameras halfway through Media Club. See you guys. Oregon is awesome. I think I'm going to stay here for the rest of my life. I will see you on Sunday. Bye.